Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And I thought we would go to uh, a company that we've talked about before. Yeah, this week we're going to cover a new twist for a company that we've talked a lot about on the Now You Know Investor Club. Um, and that company is Gagoro. Yeah, Gagoro, ticker symbol GGR on NASDAQ. It's a Taiwanese company founded in 2011 that is arguably the leader in battery swapping for two-wheeled electric vehicles. Gagoro has a little over 2,000 employees and a market cap of $625 million. So they went public in April of 2022, which was arguably not a great time to go public. And their stock price has been drifting lower pretty much ever since. Now, disclaimer, we are not financial advisors. Do not take any of this advice to decide whether or not to buy stocks. We're just two guys on the Internet. Do your own research. But we do hold shares of Gagoro, and here's why. We think... Not only is this idea of battery swap stations for two-wheeled scooters, mopeds, and motorcycles disruptive, but there's news out of Japan last week that I think makes Gagoro's battery swap tech even more compelling and disruptive. Okay, but before we get to that, let's remind everybody what the big deal is about battery swap technology. Good idea. Okay, so I feel like here in the West, a lot of people might be thinking, what's the big deal here, right? I mean, two-wheeled scooters and mopeds just aren't that big a thing in most places on this side of the planet. So let's turn our attention to the other side of the planet and let's look at Taiwan where Gagoro started and let's look at this map slash info chart. So this chart is already a year and a half old, but I think it does drive the point home. Over a million Gagoro swappable battery packs. All right, so just picture that in your mind. They've already got a million of these. What these look like are these kind of vending machines, almost like a big, you know, vending machine that sells, you know, soft drinks. But instead, it has these slots where you pull in and out the battery. So if you subscribe, you go there, uh, blip your, I think, your app, um, and you take out whatever battery you need, pop in your old battery that's been discharged, and it charges it up, okay? So over a million of those battery packs, over 450,000 subscribers, this is just in Taiwan, 275 plus million swaps have taken place, which is over 355,000 daily swaps, 2,200 locations, over 5 billion kilometers driven. So this is not some little thing. This is a big deal in a place like Taiwan. And this is just Taiwan. Gagoro has also expanded into other countries like India, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, South Korea, Israel, and others. And just to give you some more idea about the scale we're talking about, let's look at just four places. So in Taiwan, there's about 15 million motorcycles and scooters registered in 2022. This means that about 65% of the population owned a motorcycle or scooter last year. Just think about that for a second. That is not true here in the United States, right? So that's why I'm saying this is a big deal there. In China, 344 million motorcycles and scooters were registered in China in 2022. And that means that about 24% of the population owned a motorcycle or scooter. And you might be like, wait, why is it so much less in China? Well, they're not cheap, right? If you don't make that much money, it's cheaper just to walk or ride a bicycle or, or take, take public, public transportation. transportation. So it does cost more. Um, Taiwan is a richer country. Let's go to Indonesia. 129 million motorcycles and scooters. Um, about 46% of the population owned a mo motorcycle or scooter in 2022. And then India, 220 million motorcycles and scooters. And just again, the U.S. has a population of what, 325 million. So... <laughs> That's like if almost every man, woman, and child in America had a motorcycle or scooter. <laughs> if you added all these numbers up, we would be lousy with motorcycles. Right. Every man, woman, and child in the United States would have two motorcycles or mopeds on exactly. their lawn. And this means that in India, 16% of the population owned a motorcycle or scooter. And to Jesse's point, you can imagine if everyone you knew had a motorcycle or scooter that ran on an engine with gasoline in it. Can you imagine how loud and smelly the place you lived would be? And that would mean that the quality of life wherever you lived would be pretty awful. And that's in no small part um, why the quality of life in some of these places that we're probably telling you about. And you're probably going like, oh, those places is why they are the way they are. Right. Um, it's not the total reason, but it is a big part of it. Now, do you see the TAM here? The total addressable market? It's huge. And as more and more governments push to clean up the air quality, just that one reason alone, that will help electric mopeds, motorcycles, and scooter adoption, not to mention the savings in maintenance and fuel costs. But I hear you. You're asking, what about this news out of Japan? All right. So at the Japan Mobility Show last week, we got our first look at this. This is called Project X. Wow. It's a Great concept. Great name. Great name. Project X? Project X. Wow. <laughs> no company's ever done that before. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's a concept vehicle. It's a small electric car that runs on, wait for it, 
Gagoro swappable batteries. Mm. Now, I've got to be honest, when I first saw this story, I thought not another concept EV. And I remembered that I'd seen this announced back in November of last year when it was just a CGI drawing, because I got to be honest, I just don't get that excited by computer drawings of things anymore. It's pretty easy to draw something. It's not even that hard to make a prototype. We see so many of them that never amount to anything. And when I looked to see what company was behind this, I didn't recognize MIH Consortium. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. But then I dug a little deeper and I found out that behind this consortium is Foxconn. So while you might be saying, why are you so excited about a prototype which you just said is easy to make? I think one thing that intrigues me is that this Project X vehicle is going to be made by Foxconn, which is already getting some experience in the EV market. As we know, they're working with Lordstown Endurance pickup trucks and the Fisker Pair here in the U.S. at the Lordstown, Ohio factory, which they bought for a song from GM, well, from Foxconn after they got it from GM. So, I mean, Foxconn does know a thing or two about manufacturing at scale. Yeah, being able to build at scale, that makes the product profitable is no easy task. Right, and I feel like the smaller the car, the easier it is to manufacture. Smaller motors, less materials in general. And in this case, you don't have to worry about making the battery packs. Gagoro will handle that. Right, which means that it doesn't really matter what the range is because with Gagoro battery swap stations all over the place and having it only take a few seconds to swap out the batteries, range becomes a bit of a non-issue. Yeah, it's kind of like having an infinite range EV. And what I love about this is that Gagoro is taking on no risk. If this Project X car fails to be profitable, it is not going to adversely affect Gagoro's bottom line. But what it is signaling is that companies like Foxconn can see the value that Gagoro is bringing to their product. With prospective car buyers not having to pay for a big battery pack, Foxconn gets to lower the upfront price of the vehicle and drastically reduce the weight of the vehicle. So how many Gagoro batteries is this going to take? So from what I'm seeing out of Japan, the Project X car only takes two Gagoro batteries, and that seems low. But let's look at some of the stats for the Gagoro battery pack itself. Because, I mean, there are some scooters like that take mopeds two. that take two of these batteries. Right. So that's it just seems weird, but it okay. does. So, yeah. So let's look at the battery pack itself. These are the stats. I wanted to help give some sense to this. So Jesse and I have converted a electric car, mm -hmm. well, an old ice car into an electric car. We took an MG Midget, um, which is a very, very small car. And we put in five Tesla Model S battery modules. Mm -hmm. Those are 22.8 volts each. So do the math. And that comes out to about 114 volt architecture. And we have tons of power in our car. Yeah. I mean, about 70 horsepower, which is more than enough for a small urban EV. But I mean, the big question is, I don't actually know how many amps we're pulling. I think we're pulling a ton of amps from this because each Tesla module is uh, itself its own, you know, uh, many uh, parallel. Right. So, I mean, this would only be able to draw about 50 amps. And so that's where I, I think because it's so lightweight and small. Look, the big question, I think, goes down to the efficiency. Sure. Um, let's also help you with this. Uh, if you take a Model 3, which is one of the most efficient EVs at the moment, a uh, very heavy car, right? Over 5,000 pounds. True. What do you get as your watt hours per mile? Depends on how you're driving, but I mean, you can If, get, if you're driving like slow urban speeds. Sure. Uh, you can get around 220 watt hours per mile. Okay. So what I did was I assumed that this would be more efficient. Obviously it's lighter. So I just assume very conservatively 150 watt hours per mile for Project X. I think it'll be way, way better, but I'm just way did that. Better. I just did that to be really conservative. That would mean that with two batteries, you'd have 22 miles of range before needing to swap. Again, I think it's probably going to be more like 30 or 40, but I just wanted to like worst case it. So I can totally picture these stats working in countries that Gagoro is already in. Taiwan, China, India, the Philippines, South Korea, and so forth. The swapping unlocks so much, and that's probably why the Chinese company Niu, remember, N-I-O, uh, they built out a battery swap station for their EVs. But remember, their EVs are regular sized cars like Tesla's. And so the battery swaps were these thousand pound plus battery packs with 70, 80, 90 kilowatt hours in them. And so the battery swap locations involved lifting the car, robots, uh, bolts. Uh, it took more than five minutes. Then you had to figure out how to charge those giant packs. On the other hand, Gagoro's battery swap locations are just these tiny little kiosks like vending machines that we talked about. They can be placed almost anywhere. They don't require much power because there's not that much in each bank. Mm. And I think that if this starts to catch on in Asian countries, it could easily work in European and North American cities as well. Because I want you to think about this. We take this Project X car and we introduce it to, say, Rome or Paris, right? I think a lot of people there are going to go, hey, this works for me. I would like to get to my job, you know, four miles away. 
I don't want to be cold. I don't want to get rained on. Uh, maybe I have a small business, so I have to need to carry some you know, flowers and de- deliver them or some tools. This works for me. I get to work. I have no place to charge it, but I don't need to. I stop at a Google charge, you know, swappable station. And when I get home, I have no place to charge it. Oh, but that doesn't matter either, right? If that starts working for Europeans, I think that people in New York and Chicago and other American cities are going to go, hey, wait. This could work for us here, too, for all those same reasons. Well, and I want to give a little bit of context to this. Um, When Zach and I visited Amsterdam, we were lucky enough to drive in an Eli Zero, which is a small electric car. It looks about the same size as this. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem that we were running into was charging it. Even in a great, like, friendly city like Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Right. We're in Amsterdam of all places. And, I mean, there were places to charge. I'm not saying any of that. But... um, I wish we could have just parked it anywhere right. because if we could have parked it anywhere and just gone and found a swapping station, you know, every once in a while, I wouldn't have worried. And another thing was this uh, vehicle that we were driving had a range of about 60 miles and that was really stressful right. because I have range anxiety right. and we had to charge the car. Right. And it can only charge really slowly because that is a tiny battery pack. So we were basically forced to be stressed the whole time. You know, we got to someplace with like 10 kilometers left, which is not a lot of range. And then we had to like find a place to plug it in. And here's another thing. Even if the car itself doesn't support more than two batteries, you can put more than two batteries in the car. (laughs) So you can go to a charging station, say like, you know what, today I'm going to be on the go and I'm going to need a couple more batteries. Just grab them. Good girl doesn't care. You're subscribed. You're going to pay for it. So you pop them in the car. And then when your batteries get low, you just swap them out inside the car. And I think that's another huge aspect to this. And because these vehicles are so small, parking becomes less of an issue. Mm -hmm. You can fit so many more little vehicles into an on-street parking or parking garage than you can with big vehicles. And often the pushback with city dwellers is that they don't know how they would charge their vehicles because they don't have garages and driveways like people in the suburbs do. So again, this Project X vehicle solves that problem. They just need to go to a Gagoro battery swap station. And because Gagoro has first mover status, I mean, they've been doing this for over a dozen years. They've built up brand awareness. They have the technical know-how and they've proven their technology with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of battery swaps already. That's a key point. When you've done it that many times, you figure out all the little kinks, all the little things that, well, our app isn't quite perfect. Oh, the payment system didn't quite work. And you get to tweak it until you get it better and better. Whereas new players come in and they have to figure all this out from scratch. So I think you can see why we're kind of excited about Gagoro as a disruptive company. Yeah, this is the kind of company that most people don't know much about, especially here in the West. But now you do. So I'd be interested to see your thoughts below in the comments about whether you think Agoro would be a company you could see yourself investing in. Please consider joining our Now You Know Investor Club on Patreon. It not only helps support the work we do, but it also offers you a bunch of other great perks that you disruptive investors can add to your arsenal. We have our weekly Investor Club bonus stories, our Investor Club Slack with over a thousand members talking about every disruptive idea imaginable, and our exclusive live streams with CEOs and founders that you get to join in and ask questions on. Uh, So you get to talk to founders and executives who are disrupting technology as we know it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week on Disruptive Investing.